to another edition of the Nightly News. I'm Chris Lee here with LPNN, bringing you all the news that is news and none of the news that isn't most of the time. Yes, I'm back, and yes, my hair is a mess. Behind the hat sometimes gets a little sweaty and apparently makes my hair stand straight up. Tonight's episode is brought to you by H&R Block right here in Page, Arizona, and Ted's Marine Supply and the Page Public Library, where Adult Nerf Wars is coming up really soon. So don't forget about that. We'll have some more stuff to talk about with them here in just a few minutes. But we've got all kinds of crazy stuff going on today. We have some good news. We have uh, some interesting news, kind of some bad news for some areas of the state. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. So this is from Flagstaff. This is an update for a story we covered in March of this year. In late March, during routine inspections over spring break at the Hilltop townhomes, staff discovered the body of Joseph Michael Bach. The Coconino County Medical Examiner's Office has determined his death was due to suicide. According to the Arizona Daily Sun, toxicology results showed Bach had both marijuana and methamphetamine in his system. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Oh, we've got some comments over here. Renee says hello. Hello, Renee. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, let's see. Lois is saying Adult Nerf Wars is this Friday. Yes, we will go into that in a little bit, Lois. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, apparently somebody wants to call. Hey, look at that. That's professional for you. I get back on the first day and uh, <laughs> I got my phone on. Woo! Live TV. You gotta love it. All right. Moving on to other news right here in Page. Glen Canyon National Recreation Area would like to put out a reminder to everyone that if you're visiting Horseshoe Bend to use caution. Temperatures are predicted to be over 100 degrees all this week, and it is being advised that for individual safety, you do not visit Horseshoe Bend during the hottest parts of the day. It is also being advised that no matter what time of day you visit, bring plenty of water, wear a hat, and use sunscreen to gauge how much water you need, how to recognize the signs of heat illness, and other safety tips for visiting Page. Watch our interview with Brian Keller and Jason Larson from Page Banner Hospital. You can find that in the video section in our playlists of live interviews. Also, if you are bringing your pets with you, watch our interview with Dr. Roundtree from the Page Animal Hospital on how to keep your pet safe in the heat right here in Page. Uh, yes, that, that hike going up Horseshoe Bend, if you don't know, it is a, it's a relatively steep, sandy, and rocky hill that has no shade in it, and it is extremely hot out right now, so be very careful out there. <clears throat> Let's see, Lois says, shame on you. Oh! I don't even know what you're talking about now. All right, let's see. Moving on to other local stories we have. This is a story that is different from the others that we broadcast during the news. However, it is one that LPNN believes the community and you guys, our network, need to hear. You may or may not have seen the post about a lost dog over several different community pages. Yesterday, a tourist from Chicago lost her fur baby in Lower Antelope Canyon. The pup's name is Mona, and she was on medication. After over 30 hours in the Slot Canyon, Mona was found to the delight of her mom and many others. Her pet sitter in Kanab, Genevieve, of Genevieve's Animal Care has given LPNN permission to use her information, including her updated post. Genevieve writes, From my post about my new canine friend Mona, who was lost from her mom at Lower Antelope Canyon yesterday, my friend Kathleen Burke forwarded my post to her amazing friend Sharon, who lives in Page, who went out to help and search for her and found her with the amazing guides from Dixie Ellis's Lower Antelope Canyon tours. Sharon brought water, a bowl, food, and some sheets with which she made booties for Mona's paw on the hot sand. Genius. Nurse Sharon writes, Lord, thank you once again. Mona is back with her family. 
Many, many thanks to Dixie Ellis Lower Antelope Canyon Tours for giving me permission to be on the Navajo Nation to look for this dog. And to the guides who spotted her, the one who went with me down in the canyon to get her, the driver of the vehicle, and the three young men who carried her the last 100 yards out of the canyon and pulled me out with a rope. She is at Dr. Roundtree's now, getting checked out, but other than no food or water for 24 hours, I think she is in good shape. Mona, you are a real sweetheart, and I'm glad to have met you. Not necessarily under these circumstances. Have a tr safe trip back to Chicago. Thank you, Sharon Nelson and Dixie, uh, Dixie Ellis's Lower Antelope Canyon Tours for saving Mona's life. Thank you, Navajo Nation, and thanks to the person or folks who gave Mona's mom and friend a helicopter ride to search from above, and to all those who let her post her posters everywhere, and to the Page News for offering to me to put the picture on this evening's news, and to all those who shared my post widely here on Facebook. And thank you, Facebook. Thank you ever so much. It takes a village. Mona checked out great at Dr. Roundtree's. Her paws were shredded, but wet nose, nice gums, and hydrated skin. 30 hours in the desert. Sharon told me, I knew her paws were bad. I felt so sorry for her, and I was pretty sure she had caught up on water. I had 15 bottles with me, and she drank all of them. When the three young men got to us, she drank some of theirs, too, and more when we got her back to the tour place. Hold on here. I have, uh, I have some pictures for you guys. Let's see if we can't get this up here. LPNN is happy that Mona and her mom were reunited and the story turned out well. Thank you to the Page and Dixie Ellis Lower Antelope Canyon Tours community for making this reunion happen. Genevieve is right. It does take a village and today the community in and around Page showed a tourist the type of warm-hearted people that we truly are. There we go. Here's one of the pictures of her drinking up some water there. And I think we have another one here. Why oh, she's a cutie. Looks like she was really thirsty. And we have another one here, happily reunited with her folks. Look at that. Awesome, awesome. So thanks to you guys out there for being part of the network and helping this person out and to all of those other people out there that were able to assist in getting this pet back to her, uh, back to her family. <clears throat> oh, let's see, we have, uh, <coughs> Excuse me, we have some uh, comments over here. Oh, we've got some thumbs up. Hey, Mario, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all for sharing, commenting, and liking all of these posts. It helps Facebook spread the news out to everybody. All right, with the 4th of July holiday coming up, pay close attention to the machine you are using to swipe your credit card through for your purchases. Since January of this year, 33 credit card skimmers have been found throughout Arizona. Most of the skimmers found were concentrated around the Maricopa County area with one found in Oro Valley and one in the Eloy area. In 2017, two skimmers were found in Flagstaff. Some of the suggestions to help protect yourself from skimmers include using credit rather than debit. And if you cannot use credit, cover your hand while you enter your PIN. <clears throat> According to an article with the Federal Trade Commission, skimmers may have pinhole cameras just over the keypad that will record pin entries. Another suggestion is to monitor your bank and credit card accounts. If you see unknown activity, immediately inform your bank or your credit card company. <clears throat> uh, let's see, Carol's asking, uh, oh, Carol says, super happy puppy. Yes, she was definitely that. And uh, Carol is also asking, do you know where in Eloy? Um, I don't have them right here in front of me, uh, Carol, but we will uh, post up some locations uh, after the news, okay? All right, let's see what else we have for you today. In St. George, for the first time, the Utah Coalition Against Sexual Assault will be holding a Me Too town hall meeting on Wednesday, June 27th from 6.30 to 8 local time at the St. George Library located at 88 West 100 South. <clears throat> This event is designed to give survivors <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> this event is designed to give survivors of sexual assault a safe place they can openly discuss their experiences. The, uh, the idea behind town hall meetings such as this is to provide an opportunity for the community to understand sexual assault from a survivor's perspective and know what discussions need to happen. The goal is to better what is happening throughout Utah and how the community can help victims and survivors. <clears throat> 
And a little uh, interesting fact we have here tonight for you with uh, national news. On this day in 1950, the Korean War officially began with the invasion of South Korea by North Korea. The war lasted for three years, one month, and two days. And uh, Lois put here, ending on July 27, 1953. That's actually incorrect, as we did not actually end that war. We signed an armistice with them and are still technically in a state of war. So uh, with the negotiations that are going on now, that could change sometime in the future. <clears throat> All right, moving on to some events we have for you here today. Oh, let's see. Uh, Frank says, hello, watching. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and share. We really appreciate that. All right, so Tuesday, June 26th from 11 to 11.30, tracking down dinosaurs at the Carl Hayden Visitor Center. Learn about the dinosaurs that live and were left behind at the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area from a National Park Service paleontologist. Meet at the dinosaur tracks in front of the Carl Hayden Visitor Center. For more information, call 928-608-6200. On Wednesday the 27th, starting at noon, is a City Council Special Agenda Meeting. This meeting is two executive sessions. The first is a discussion and possible action pertaining to City Manager applicant interviews, and the second is discussion and possible action pertaining to City Manager applicants. <clears throat> Also, on Wednesday the 27th, starting at 6.30 at the City Council Chambers, is the regular City Council meeting. We're going to go ahead and pull that up and let you guys know what's being discussed for that day. All right, so at the City Council meeting, in unfinished business, there's going to be discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to a zoning code update. There is also going to be discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to the sale of real estate located at 27 Poplar Street. It's going to be the second reading for that ordinance. In new business, they have discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to the Northern Arizona Council of Governments partnership to fund Meals on Wheels and Congregate Meals. Discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to the Page Utility Enterprises Rates, Fees, and Charges Resolution number 1201-18. Discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to a contract between the City of Page, DBA Page Utility Enterprises, and the United States Department of Energy, Western Area Power Administration, or WAPA, Salt Lake City Integrated Projects for Firm Electronics Service. Discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to adopting the uh, fiscal year 2018-2019 preliminary budget and setting the public hearing date resolution. Uh, let's see, they're going to have an executive session. Discussion and possible action by the City Council pertaining to a potential RV park on city property. Uh, let's see, business from the mayor, there's going to be presentation of Master Municipal Clerk plaque to City Clerk Kim Larson. Uh, in business from the council, they're going to be having another executive session, discussion, and possible action pertaining to Horseshoe Bend. Uh, they're going to have boards and commissions, discussion by the city council pertaining to reports by board liaisons and appointing of people and talking about people for all of the different advisory boards, including the airport advisory board, the community center advisory board, the community development advisory board, the library advisory board, parks and recreation advisory board, the planning and zoning commission, and page utility enterprises board. So a lot of stuff going on with the city on Wednesday. Stay tuned for that one. <clears throat> Let's see, Carol says, there are lots of our guys posted in Korea today. There are. Okay, <clears throat> moving on to other news here. Let's see, we've got a bunch of different things going on. All right, uh, the 4th of July. All right, so this is some of the, uh, the semi-bad news here. So far, the dry conditions have led three Arizona cities to cancel their 4th of July fireworks displays. Cave Creek, Flagstaff, and Williams have all canceled this year's displays. However, it does appear that each city will be hosting their previously scheduled daytime events. Excuse me. As a reminder, the Flagstaff area is still under Stage 3 restrictions. 
meaning consumer-grade fireworks are also banned. Instead of fireworks, the city of Flagstaff has joined with the Oakmont to host the 4th annual Lights on the Lawn 4th of July celebration from 3 to 9 p.m. Activities will include water slides, obstacle courses, a mechanical bull, food vendors, a beer garden, and musical performances. Parking will be located at the Continental Driving Range. Other area events include the parade, which starts at 9 a.m., and a free outdoor concert presented by the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra at the Pepsi Amphitheater. If you are still wanting fireworks, head on over to Page. The City of Page is still hosting their fireworks display on the Lake Powell Golf Course. If you are in the Tuba City area, Tuba City events are being held on July 3rd at the Tuba City High School football field. There will be jumpy castles, a kid zone, hot dog eating contest, music, games, water balloon fights, and more. The events are scheduled from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. Moving on to the City of Page's 4th of July events. Uh, don't forget from uh, the Chamber of Commerce, they're still looking for vendors for the vendor fair. And uh, that's going to be at City Park, and I believe the fee is $45 for that. Uh, make sure you give them a call at 928-645-2741 if you're interested in setting up a booth for this 4th of July. All right, let's see. The City of Page 4th of July events. The parade starts at 10 a.m. We will be broadcasting the parade live and are currently looking for one sponsor for that broadcast. Contact us if you're interested in sponsoring that broadcast. Uh, you can contact us through our email at lakepalnews at gmail.com or you can go over to lakepalnews.com and send us an email through that or you can message us right here on Facebook. Either way, we'll get it and we'll get back to you. Park activities will start at the flagpole at approximately 11 a.m. There will be an opening ceremony at that time. There will also be various games for kids throughout the day. At 12, musical chairs. At 12.30, sack races. At 12.40, the fire department will be firing off their water cannon. At 1.20, there is a watermelon eating contest. At 2, the fire department water cannon will be going off again. And at 2.30, Pinatas. For the younger kids, there will be a fish pond for them to enjoy. Uh, to sign up, oh, here we go. I just saw this here. To sign up to be a vendor, call the chamber at 928 645 2741 or stop by the chamber to get more information and the forms. Registration is free. The only thing needed is insurance. The chamber does not <clears throat> the chamber does provide their insurance for $45 if you don't have any. All right, that's a lot of stuff going on right there. Um, also, Ted's Marine is going to be having a special 4th of July sale for all kinds of interesting things. We're going to be heading over there tomorrow and getting some pictures so we can put them up and you guys can see what's all available out there. Looks like it's going to be a good time. All right, what else do we have? Ah, yes, the weather. Let's go ahead and move this to the weather real quick. If we don't have any technical difficulties, you know how that goes. That's always exciting. Nope, that's definitely not the right one. There we go. All right. We're almost there. It's almost like it was meant to be. All right. Ta-da! Look at that. All right, so tonight we got a low of 76 degrees with the winds hovering just over 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow, a high of 105 degrees outside and sunny skies. On Wednesday, 106 degrees with a low of 75 and nice sunny skies with the wind hovering right around 10 miles an hour. On Thursday, 102 with a low of 73 partly cloudy with the winds approaching 15 miles an hour. With all that excessive heat out there, please be careful, stay hydrated and stay safe. Don't forget to check out our live interview with Banner Hospital for all those safety tips on what to do during the summer. Well, that's all we have for you guys tonight. Thank you very much for joining us and thank you very much for liking, commenting and sharing all of these posts. I'm back in the office now and Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning on The Morning Show. You guys have a wonderful night, and thank you so much for being a part of the network. <clears throat>